This is a lesson over section 2.2, which is talking about modeling with power functions. All right? A power function is defined as any function that can be written like this, f of x equals k times x to the a, where k and a are non-zero constants. All right? So that means just what it says. k and a are not zeros. All right? um, a is the power, and k is called the constant of variation, or sometimes we call it the constant of proportion. Right? We say f of x varies as the eighth power of x. Okay, so when you hear varies as, you hear that terminology, or when you hear is proportional to, you're thinking this kind of function. All right, so let's do some examples here. I've got some formulas, and I want to identify in each one of the formulas what is the power and what is the constant of variation. So here's the circumference formula, c equals 2 pi r. The power here is 1, because that r is to the 1 power, although we never write the 1. Um, the power is 1, and the constant of variation is 2 pi. That's the number out in front. Okay. For the area formula, area equals pi r squared. The power is clearly 2, because that's what the variable is being raised to. And pi is the constant of variation. Okay. This one is a little bit different. Now we have k divided by d squared. And so what I want to show you is that if I write f equals k, divided by d squared, that's equal to k times d to the negative 2. Okay, so I can rewrite division by a squared power as d, or whatever the variable is, to the negative uh, 2 power. Okay, so here the um, power is negative 2, all right, and the constant of variation is and lots of times we will denote the constant of variation with a k. Um, you can see that in the next one as well. So um, k, when you see k, you're thinking constant. It's just and by constant we mean some number. Okay. So v equals k over p. You might want to give this one a try and see if you get it right. Pause the video and see how you do. Um, okay. Now I'm going to give you the answer. Right. So the power here would be negative one because you can rewrite that as k to the negative, or sorry, p to the negative one. And then again, the constant of variation is so that's how you identify powers and constants of variation in power functions. Let's move on here. A little bo bit of vocabulary. Direct variation. Um, those are types of power functions where the formulas have positive powers. Inverse variation are power function formulas with negative powers. So you can see the last two that we just did. Those were inverse variation problems uh, or formulas. And the first two were direct variation formulas. Right? Let's do an example here. The period of time t for the full swing of a pendulum varies as the, okay, so there's that, <coughs> excuse me, there's that phrase that's important here, as the square of the pendulum's length L. Model this as a power function. So we have t is equal to, um, and you know, there's, there's almost a, too many words here. So, so t for the full swing of a pendulum, we're not really worried about that, when we're writing the formula, varies as the, so that phrase right there tells me it's going to be equals to the square root of the pendulum length. And it also tells me that when I read that varies as the, I need a constant of variation in there. So k times the square root of L is what is how that's written. If you're not convinced that's a power function, you could write this as k times L to the one half power. That would be fine. Right, so let's go on to the next thing here. Monomial functions and their graphs. So a single term polynomial function is called a monomial function. What is important about monomial functions is that, well, a couple things. One, they look really similar to power functions. In fact, they are a type of power function. Right? But the key thing here is that n is a positive integer. Okay, so n is going to be to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 50th, 60th, whatever um, power. All right, that makes it a monomial function. So just to give you some perspective here, if we had the set of all, I'm going to draw a Venn diagram here. Okay, so suppose we had the set of all power functions. Inside the set of all power functions is this smaller set which is the set of all monomials. 
okay? So the monomials are a subset of the power functions. Here's some examples of monomials. You know, things like f of x equals seven. f of x equals one third x to the 12. f of x equals pi x to the 33rd power. Okay, those are all examples of monomial functions, right? Okay, so in this one, we want to take this function and we want to analyze it. Okay, so we want to figure out what is the base function for it and um, whether f is even or odd. Okay, so in fact, actually, there's a typo here. You want to change this on your paper if it isn't already changed to a positive 3. Okay, so 2x cubed. The basic function, or the base function here, is x cubed. So what we're trying to do is figure out how x to the third has changed. So I'm just going to write up here that we've got y equals x cubed. Right? And how do we change that? Well, if we multiply by a 2 on the outside of the function, it's going to cause a vertical stretch of, uh, by a factor of 2. Okay, so I guess we can write that down to answer that part. We have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And so that answers that. If we take a look at the graph of this, it goes through the point negative 1, 2, 0, 0, and 1, 2, and it's a cubic function, so it looks sort of like this. Okay, so there we can analyze it graphically to determine if it's even, odd, or neither. Even would have y-axis symmetry, and odd would have origin symmetry. This has origin symmetry. We, don't, we aren't asked to show it algebraically, so we can just look at the graph and be like, yeah, this is, this is an odd function okay, because it has origin symmetry. All right, moving on. Last problem here. Over here on the left, I have a bunch of data. I have data on the planets with, um, that gives us average distance from the sun and the period of orbit for each uh, of the first six planets. Okay, and then what we want to do is take this data and use it to obtain a power function model for orbital period as a function of average distance from the sun. And then we'll make a prediction about um, Neptune. So what you're going to do is put the average distance from the sun in L1 in a list in your calculator. You're going to put the period of orbit in L2, and you're going to run a power regression. Okay, on the TI-83 pluses, I believe you have to hit stat, calc, and then go down to, um, I believe it's A, but it's like power reg is what you're looking for, so which is power regression, right? And so you run that, and when you do, and you should try it to make sure that you can get, that you get what I'm about to write down here. When you do that, you get Y equals 2, I'm oh, sorry, 0.2, X to the 1.5 for your model, okay? Where the input, the X value, is the distance from the sun, and the output is going to be the period of the orbit. So for the question that's asked, the, the follow-up question here is, well, let's look at Neptune. If Neptune is 4,497 gigameters from the sun on average, then what is the um, period of its orbit? And so when you plug that in, you go Y equals 0.2 times 4,497 to the 1.5, you get um, 60,130, no, sorry, 60,313 days. Okay, so um, again, you should try that one and make sure that you can do that in your calculator, but otherwise, that's it for section two, modeling with power functions.